Hey everyone, this is a tour of my desktop and I'll tell you a little bit about why I picked the components I did for this computer and how they helped me in my workflow. As you can see, this picture here is uh, my desk as it's set up right now. Okay, so here I have the side panel off my desktop. So I'll kind of go through the parts in here in a minute. But first I just want to mention what my history with PC hardware is. A little over two years ago, I bought my, my first desktop for the purpose of working in Blender, actually. And since then, I have built and rebuilt and swapped parts like crazy um, to get to this setup. So, I guess, along with doing all this stuff I've learned a lot of a lot of hardware stuff that I kinda wanna help people understand because I had a lot of questions when I started about what parts do I need what parts should I spend money on what should I what should I not spend money on um, so I'll go through that as I go through my desktop and explain some of the details that I have in here uh, so first things first it's hard to tell on the video but this case is larger than a normal computer if you if you picture a normal desktop that you'd see in your house it's it's a quite a bit smaller than this one and the reason I went with one that's so big is you can see all of the extra space I have for fans and then these up here this is actually a radiator and these two fans back here uh, are mounted on a radiator for one of the graphics cards so most most people won't really need a case this this big it's just nice to have all that extra space to put to put parts. So that's why I picked this one. It's a uh, it's a Corsair 5000X, and I I just I love all the space in there. Um, so a lot of people probably don't know a whole lot about the hardware itself. So I won't go into too much detail. But basically, Blender uses a combination of a processor with enough RAM and th those parts do those parts do certain functions within Blender and then your graphics cards uh, serve other purposes so mainly the, the processor handles things like sculpting or if you're modeling with a whole lot of polygons with a lot of points uh, or complicated meshes and then if you're doing any video editing, that, that kind of work is all handled on the processor. So for that you want you want a fast processor, but some of those pieces, especially video editing, at least in Blender, they don't use tons and tons of cores. And then the graphics cards, the biggest thing is you're you're limited by how much RAM is actually installed on the graphics card. So Right now, consumer hardware is obviously cheaper than professional hardware, but they, they don't make big enough graphics cards to fit every possible scene that you could make in Blender on the GPU. And what that means is when you go to actually render the like the final picture, um, if it won't fit on the GPU's RAM, it either won't render or it'll take a lot longer just because it has to render multiple passes to get one image. So as much rendering as you can do on the GPU you want to do and the biggest one that fits into that situation is the, re the, the real time previewing. So when I'm working on the model and doing color work and moving hair particles around every time you see uh, on my videos when when I stop and let it think for a second so I can see what it what it looks like fast without actually making the, the image um, that process is sped up a ton by graphics cards. So, in my tower, you can see here I have I actually have two graphics cards. I have an RTX 3090, and this one is uh, actually a hybrid water cooler. So, it has uh, one fan that blows air through this out the back, and then this is actually um, a water line. These are water lines and a pump inside there that runs water through the radiator back there and the, the benefit of that is I can fit two cards in here uh, this top card is a lot 
more thin than it would be otherwise. So I have a lot more space in between these two. So the bottom card, which is actually just air cooled, has a lot more room to breathe and these things can stay cool enough to run properly and they don't they don't slow down because they get too hot. So the biggest the biggest benefit since I got my first computer is how much faster the software is using the graphics cards. It is absolutely insane how much quicker just two years um, of time has made the process. It's just changed so much. I think, I think just in general, it's something like 21 times faster than when I started. If you're using the exact same hardware, and that's all just that's all just programming. So, what I have, I have a 3090, like I said, and then this is a 3080 Ti. It's a, it's almost the same thing. It just, it has a little bit less RAM. The top, the top card here, the 3090s come with 24 gigs of VRAM which is on the graphics card. The 3080 Ti's have 12, but it's the same It's the same processor inside of it. So for most things, as long as it, I don't run out of RAM on the bottom card, I can use both of them. And it's, it's more or less twice as fast as just having one GPU installed. And uh, those things, they're basically top of the line right now. So they do most of the work. If I can, if I can push work to those, I, I definitely try to. And then RAM, um, I'll talk briefly about RAM. The, the one question that I always found hardest to answer on the internet was how much RAM do you need? And right now I have 64 gigabytes of RAM. It's, it's, it's fairly fast RAM, it's not the fastest, but with the processor I have, it's about as fast as you can use. And I'll explain that in a second, but uh, I found 64 gigs to be very very usable and some of the models I work with and the sequencing I do for editing videos they're they're decently large files I'll say they're not massive uh, but 64 gigs would be overkill for people just starting out I would definitely recommend 32 gigs for anybody that is kind of going to be serious about 3d work uh, if you're only gaming on your computer, 16 is probably enough for now. But for whatever reason, uh, RAM is one I, I just was never able to find very many answers on. So I would go with 64 or 32 gigs. Uh, the processor I have is actually a AMD 5950X, which is 16 cores. And just to put it into perspective, most most gaming computers these days will have either six or eight cores in general some have some have four but uh, having 16 cores and 32 threads will allow me to do things like sculpting like I said with a whole lot of detail in the model all those cores will let me do either a whole lot more detail at once or I can run multiple processes so I could be sculpting while uh, having like a Chrome tab open on my other screen for reference images while listening to music and uh, I can even have Blender and Substance Painter which is what I use for texturing. Uh, I can have multiple high high uh, hardware use programs or heavy heavy load programs open at a time and it doesn't slow anything down because I can I can play with how many cores each program gets. So most people that, especially just starting out in this stuff, I would recommend an 8-core processor and uh, either brand, Intel or AMD. It, it doesn't make a huge difference. Uh, the only reason I went with AMD is because at the time there was no other, there was no other 16-core processor uh, for anywhere near the price as this one, so it was a pretty easy choice for, for knowing I was going to do this kind of work with it. And then, um, as far as storage goes, I think you could easily spend way too much money on storage. So storage, I'm referring to hard drives. Uh, you probably want to run your programs and your operating systems on a solid state hard drive. And then if you have any long-term storage that doesn't require speed, you're not loading files in and out all the time, 
if you if you just need a lot of storage definitely still go get conventional hard drives which are the big heavy older ones uh, you can get you can get way more way more terabytes of storage from from those for a lot less money and then anything you're gonna load data off of so uh, I save files and and videos raw footage and edited video onto an NVMe solid state drive which is as fast as they make them right now and the benefit of that is anything that takes time to load or to write data to is not going to slow down my process at all so while you're recording a video it has to save that that file in real time and it has to keep making it and, and storing it and uh, if you have a slow enough hard drive you might actually even get bad video quality or choppy sound because the the hard drive can't keep up with the computer trying to write the data so this this computer has three hard drives installed and um, they're they're actually all solid state drives because they just provide the most speed benefit and any other long-term storage I do is is handled by a cheaper older computer so I guess that's a general overview of this PC. Um, the only other note really is probably the motherboard. Not very many have two full size slots that are consumer level hardware, but I think most people are going to be blown away by the performance of having just just one graphics card. The way I was able to get two is it just it has two slots that you can run at half speed, but the slots are so fast that it doesn't it doesn't impact the hardware so other than that uh, that's an overview of my computer itself just a couple more notes I wanted to add I realized I kinda left out um, the most important takeaway from this is that this is a very high-end consumer desktop meaning you can't really get a better consumer product so to get anything faster, you'd have to go up to pro hardware. And by that, I mean uh, server level equipment, higher end workstations that are that are pre-made from, you know, companies like Dell or HP and so on. Or you would have to go get uh, like an AMD Threadripper processor. But those things become very expensive. So I don't want people to think that you have to have hardware like this just to run Blender on their website on blender's website you can actually see the minimum hardware requirements so definitely if you're looking into getting into 3d artwork go look up those first uh, this video shouldn't discourage you you don't need anywhere near as much of processing power as this thing has so to start off you could easily work on this with uh, a 700 dollars laptop that basically as long as you have a decent gpu and 16 plus gigs of RAM, you should be able to do quite a bit in Blender, even on a laptop. The biggest benefit that a computer like this gives you is time savings. So you don't need this just to work in Blender. It just saves a lot of time in the areas where um, I would otherwise have to sit and wait for the computer to work. Thanks for watching. I just wanted to show you guys my desktop setup. Uh, soon I'll do a video that goes through the software and some of the technical stuff in the different programs I use and how they relate to the hardware. Please check out my previous videos and my character creation uh, videos so you can see what I use all this for. Thanks.